Jonathan, we want to get started with you. We are celebrating 125 years of APS, quite a milestone year. Uh, how would you say that the physics community has changed over the course of that time? During the last 125 years, the physics community has grown, it's diversified, it's become more international, uh, and uh, has really had fantastic influence on society, on the way we live today. At this meeting, for example, the first meeting of the American Physical Society had 36 physicists, and here in Minneapolis we have over 12,000. That blows my mind that it was only 36 <laughs> physicists coming together for that first meeting. What, what, what growth we've seen. Um, Yunki, how would you say the priorities have shifted for physicists over these 125 years? The, uh, first of all, um, as John mentioned, that uh, we are much more global, and physics is a global enterprise, and we are planning to uh, have a much stronger uh, international connections and collaborations uh, with uh, societies uh, and physics societies outside of the U.S. John, John, let me take you back to that uh, first answer when you're talking about the change that we've uh, seen. And we have plenty of change still to come, right? So, so how do physicists engage with societal change? What are the major challenges that, as a, as a world that we, uh, that we face? That is a terrific question because really the world is facing tremendous challenges these days, ranging from energy to climate, food security, and physics really will play a role in the solution to each of these problems. But that requires that we, as a community, reach out to neighboring disciplines, reach out to other countries because they'll require global solutions, and frankly, also reach out to industry because that's the way to uh, really have impact as well. When I, when I had the honor of uh, chatting to Anne Lehulier, she was sort of saying what's fascinated her in her career is that uh, uh, physics has rise, has rised up to face a lot of challenges, for, uh, but as it does that, there are, there's more we don't know. There's more challenges that sort of come up. So, so Yonki, what do you think uh, physicists could do more of to in, engage with society and with the issues that we face? Well, as J Jonathan just mentioned, uh, we have uh, tremendous challenges. This is a global challenges. Um, we can do much more, stay outside of our own uh, discipline, but collaborating with uh, other uh, disciplines. Again, these challenges, uh, global challenges, the solutions have to be very innovative, creative, and, and which needs uh, <coughs> different disciplines to work together, not done by one uh, single discipline. So that those big challenges require more and more their uh, multidisciplinary approaches. So uh, we, we have to do much of those uh, uh, societal issues as, as a part of our uh, the work. You've both been mentioning about you know, the international outreach and global collaboration. And Yonki, you've said that global collaboration isn't only a necessity, but that there's also beauty in it. I would like for you to elaborate on that just a little bit. What do you mean by there's beauty in it? And how important is global collaboration? To tackle any challenges, this is a particular physics, uh, the field of my, my physics, or this is a more global challenges. Uh, I've uh, learned from the, uh, uh, my own experience is that diverse, is, diverse voices and the experience is a background play a very important role. Mm -hmm. so imagine that uh, we have a collaboration of thousands and think that everybody is thinking exactly what I'm thinking. You know, one and thousand is the same, mm -hmm. the brain. But having diverse uh, brains and, and with the different backgrounds, we can really think uh, questions and issues of very different perspectives and that's the key to uh, finding innovative solutions so that's what I mean beauty so uh, it's like a big orchestra with all different instruments have uh, amazing beauty uh, so that's uh, uh, I feel that uh, international multidisciplinary approaches of uh, finding solutions uh, that's what I mean. I love that analogy of a symphony. Of an love orchestra, that. yeah. No, I, yeah. I, I love it too, but, but, but you know, I'm mindful that when I go home tonight and I switch on the television, the view of the world I'm going to see is not of an orchestra and of a no. symphony. It's an in, in increasingly fractured uh, world. So, how, Jonathan, how do we keep the sort of collaboration? How do we keep the music flowing when, <laughs> when you know, what we see around us is, 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 is fractured? So we're very fortunate in physics to share a common culture, really a culture that transcends national boundaries. And that gives us a great basis on which to build. In fact, just recently, uh, a group of over a dozen physical societies from Europe, Asia, North America, South America, have come together 
to sign a statement for the rules of the road, the principles for international research collaboration, integrity, transparency, and reciprocity. And everybody agrees that those are bedrock to future international collaboration. Well, let, let me kind of finish off by throwing a question, a very challenging question to, uh, to uh, both of you. So we're in a world of very fast technological change, you know, and we, we see so much happening, so many developments kind of every year. How do we, as physicists in the scientific community, do our best to make sure the advantages of that uh, technological innovation is open and available to everyone? One way is to make sure we're bringing the public along on our journey with us because we, physics really is for everybody. The opportunity to do physics needs to be open to everybody. The fruits of physics need to be widely shared. And no, we're not politicians, you know, we're not social scientists, but we need to be working with the broader world to ensure that the fruits of physics are shared globally. Thank you both ever so much indeed for uh, joining us and taking the time. We really appreciate it and really enjoyed it, haven't we, Audrey? Absolutely. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.